hearing this evening in the Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass. Um, originally scheduled for October the 3rd, 2018, continued until October the um, Well, I guess what we've only heard of was we had two, uh, we had a continuous yeah. and continued until the uh, December the 5th, which is tonight. So uh, originally scheduled, uh, continued to uh, November the 7th, and then continued to 12-5 um, this evening. Uh, 7 p.m. application, Bob Thomas, Thomas and Sarah Palacio, <laughs> pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 8, on appeal of the enforcement action of the building inspector, and pursuant to Mass General Laws, 40A, Section 10, for various on the running, running bylaws, Section 5.3, table of uses to allow the continuation of an non-conforming multi-family use at the property located at 28 Green Street, Reading, Mass. Um, are there individuals this evening uh, who were not here for one of the uh, first uh, the first hearing? Okay, I'll ask anybody who wishes to think or think they may wish to speak to please stand, uh, raise your right hand. Um, do, you swear, do you swear that the testimony given before this board is taken under oath uh, and uh, will speak the, tr the truth, the whole truth, and not, nothing but the truth? The answer is I do. I do. Um, well, this has con been continued twice, so uh, uh, at this point, uh, we do have some information handed over to us this evening. Um, and I'll, I'll go into that later, but I wanted to see what the petitioners had uh, been able to find out relative to the uh, occupancy of the uh, properties. Um, when it was first brought to us back on October the 3rd, so. Thank you. Uh, good morning, members of the board. Good morning. Good evening, members of the board. My name is David McBride. I'm an attorney at 19 Cherry Street in Danvers, and I represent Thomas and Sarah Brucalacchio. Could I inquire, was the board made aware of the document that was obtained from the former building inspector, Mr. LeClaire? Uh, it's in our package yeah, tonight. Okay. Not until tonight. <laughs> All right. If, if I may, I have a very short memorandum that I have copies of that I'd like to give each one of you, if I may. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I have additional copies if anyone public would like to have one. Simply stated, as you know from the meeting that took place in October, the issue here was whether or not the board would overturn the decision of the building inspector, which decision was that the use of the property as a three family is illegal and should cease and desist. Um, on behalf of the Brucalacchios, I maintain that that decision by the building inspector respectfully should be overturned and reversed by this board. And the reason is Chapter 40A, Section 7, and the statute of limitations that is found in that section. Specifically, and I know there was a lot of discussion about this, and I did not attend the October meeting, but I did have the opportunity to watch it on video, and I know there was a lot of discussion about grandfathering provisions, uh, what might be con considered immunity from enforcement. And I think that the letter from Mr. Leclerc, who was the building inspector in 1986, confirms that the permits that he issued to the predecessor owner, to Mr. Nigro, uh, Mr. Leclerc says they were issued, those permits were issued, and they included the right to have a third habitable unit at this property. Although we don't have, and I don't know that anybody has, the actual building permits that were issued in 1986. We have, we have applications for those permits, which the board has in their previous package. But this is the, from my perspective, it's 
right from the, the horse's mouth, Mr. LeClaire saying, I was the building inspector, I authorized the third unit at that premises. And we do know from the testimony first time around that the property has been used ever since, since 1986, as a three-family dwelling. Uh, my clients, the Brucolacchios, purchased the property from Mr. Nigro in 1992, and they've used the property for 26 years as a three-family. I think the most compelling issue is that, or the, the most uh, important issue, is that Chapter 40A, Section 7 says that if the use, and we're not talking about the structure, and I know there was a lot of distinction here, and it's extremely complicated and uh, sort of a, uh, an inside baseball kind of thing that only lawyers who do zoning know. I mean, many lawyers make the same mistake that I think a lot of lay people make, thinking that it's grandfathered by 10 or 6 year statute. The distinction is that 40A Section 7 says, if you are using the property in accordance with a permit that allowed that use, then after 6 years the town is prohibited, barred from enforcing that zoning. So even if the permit issued was incorrect, in fact, that's the whole point of the statute of limitations, and I'm not saying it was or it wasn't, but regardless of whether it was accurate according to the bylaw at the time, if the building inspector issues permission to use, not the structure, but to use the property as a three family, as Mr. LeClaire did, then after six years the town is barred from enforcing that nature of the of the what might be otherwise a violation. So uh, we respectfully think that that's exactly the case we have here, and we ask the board to vote to respectfully uh, reverse the decision of the building inspector and allow this three family to continue. Um, our staff planner is here again this evening, Andrew. Uh, we had asked for feedback from town council on this issue. That was one of the reasons why we had continued the initial uh, hearing. Um, and I see you've given us a, uh, a memo to that effect. If you would uh, please inform the board again uh, what the status of that is. So uh, I believe when we looked at it last time, it was a bit different version of Section 7 than highlighted here. It was the one we also used on another application where we were looking at 10 years for the structure. Um, and so we asked town council about that and if that would apply to this building and this use where he replied that um, the structure is safe after 10 years, but the use is not. So that was in relation to the structure itself. We might have overlooked this, or no one picked up on this as well. Um, so um, he didn't make any comment about this section here um, that does actually mention and used in accordance with the terms of the original building permit. So. I don't know if a review by him on that or a statement from him on that as well is needed or not, or if you guys feel comfortable with this as written. Um, I guess there's some issues on if we believe the building permits were originally intended for a third unit, which they brought in some info for that. Um, so however you guys wish to proceed. Um. Did the staff, um, community planning staff, uh, discuss this amongst themselves also? Uh, after talking, I remember uh, it was at a point where we were able to meet on something else and uh, with, with the town council, and town council had mentioned very specifically that the use, unless there was something formally documented, right. And he felt that uh, this would not be uh, something that applied under Section 7. Correct. Um, that in reality, C foresaw one option, um, which was uh, the possibility of variance in this direction for use. Yes. 
<laughs> so he did lay out options and we have a memo from the building inspector that mentions he doesn't feel it the permits issued are for a third residential unit so that is now where we're at in determining so that when researching the actual folder on that um, the only issues mentioned on the building application by Mr. Nigro back in um, I forget what the date was um, was that it was for an office right. windows mm -hmm. that were going to be replaced mm -hmm. and uh, repair of the roof of the I room. believe so but there was nothing mentioned about uh, conversion to a third uh, living room exactly well um, with that information I'll open up to board members um, yes, no. I apologize for coming in late. No. For one, so when the office space added is one thing. Who then, when they bought the house, was it already a three-bedroom unit? Was it presented to them as they're buying a three-bedroom, a three-family unit? Mm -hmm. yes. The answer is yes. That's what I had thought I understood it to be the case. So. <coughs> There's that part that has to be understood in terms of the valuation of their property when they bought it versus who and under what pretext it was sold to them. Okay. Um, Robert, questions? No. Okay. Well, I was just going to start around. <laughs> yeah. And I might come back with more. Okay. okay. Uh, well, question in, in regards to the testimony I've heard uh, tonight now, the question is, if I, if I understand it correctly, from town records, this third space, you might say, at the, at the location, uh, was to be used as office space? Right. The question well, is, whose office? Uh, right. I don't even office? know if a specific office was authorized because the building permits are for dormers and windows. And? Um, new siding and windows and renovation to the first floor apartment. So... does mention on the building permit number 15 what is the purpose of the building to family dash office so I'm guessing that's what he thought he believed so that's was. where the, the plantation right. office mm -hmm. came from from, mm -hmm. from there that's my question is office uh, whose office right. uh, <laughs> are they going to rent it out as an office are they going to is it the building owner is going to use it as an office and when he comes in once a month to uh, collect his rents or I mean kind of ambiguous and then in light of I see the uh, notarized statement by the building inspector at the time uh, Mr. Uh, Stewart LeClaire, S. LeClaire, John maybe remembers him, I don't mm -hmm. certainly, but, uh, and he notes to whom it may concern, in 1986, I, meaning him, uh, Stuart LeClaire, approved permits requested by Neil Negro for the major renovations at 28 Green Street, and including adding a third habitable unit on the third floor. I guess an office could be a habitable unit, I guess. Uh, mm -hmm. it, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, it's still, it's, to me, it's a still a little ambiguous, but in light of this uh, statement, I think it's been there mm -hmm. since 1986. Mm -hmm. It's been there used by the people uh, that own it today and renting it, rent it out as a third residential unit. Uh, he called it a habitable unit. Okay, <laughs> we're getting right. down to uh, the choices of words here. Uh, in light of that, I, I would say uh, a variance is not required. It's been in use for over the six year period. Mm -hmm. And I think town council 
when we asked for his opinion, concurred that if in fact there was evidence that the unit had been there for six years or more, and in use for six years or more, whether it was uh, permitted or not, it would be uh, grandfathered. Right. For the lack of a better word, I guess, uh, on this. Uh, so I would tend to say with that, the way I feel now, we, we should overturn the building, the current building inspector's uh, decision, and go ahead and uh, approve it based on the state statute allowing uh, allowing it to to stay in that it hasn't been enforced uh, for six years or more. That's the way I, I see it right now. Okay. So, so I would tend to agree. Um, for me, the um, signed statement from the former building inspector makes it pretty clear. Um, you know, it was permitted and it was approved. Um, it makes me slightly uncomfortable. Um, and I asked you, you, you believe that um, the use is protected after 10 years. Is that correct? No. The use is protected after six years. After Only six structures years. are protected after the 10 years. That's my understanding of the statute. Okay. Okay. Now, I think that's, if we talk to Dr. Andrew, I think that's what town council had mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, relayed to him, his his opinion on the on the matter, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't have any other questions. Okay. Um, I guess maybe two questions is, from the town's perspective, does this set yet another case example of how other existing buildings might then look at this as an example and find ways to then get their buildings to become three family units? Is that a cause of concern for the town in any way, shape, or form? I know we have zoning regulations that allow for a single family to become a two when it's your family living there, what happens after that? When the family moves on, they sell the place? Uh, is there a concern for this setting a case study example? Uh, and or is it even a positive case study example for that matter? So there's that as a point of reflection. Uh, the other point was given that it is a three family, and if it goes in that direction, as I mentioned before, there's the need to be able to straighten out the paperwork so that the next people that purchase the home obtain it, don't have to go through the same dilemma and problems, and also that the structure as it stands is safe and habitable by the codes required for a housing unit of which, I think last time we had noted that it might behoove you to have full floor plans drawn up to be able to show the inspector that should we move forward and make it permittable to have the three family, that we don't want to leave you in a situation in which it wasn't too code to be properly used as such, to which we don't have the knowledge and the information to assess that. But I do want to pose that as something that should be looked into and clarified so that we're not by chance approving this and leaving you in a situation that might come to harm you or your people that are renting and staying in the <laughs> Well, I would direct that back to Andrew as a staff planner and a member of the community development team and ask um, what concerns do you have, what has Glenn told you about uh, visiting the property, us evaluating it and so forth, and where do we stand uh, in your perspective uh, going down the road? So, first and foremost, staff can't really ever answer if we approve or not, um, but we never set precedence in a zoning case. Each case is unique on its own and viewed independently, so there is no setting precedence for any such item. Um, as far as code and safety, I have not heard from the building inspector. Um, he's looked at the property and as far as I know, he's never mentioned that there's issues with the structure or anything, but maybe a more detailed look at plans and the code might find something, but I can't answer that, so. Eric. 
before I say anything, John, <coughs> I have my Mullen rule <laughs> from the last meeting. Okay. I viewed it online. Thank you very much. <coughs> so, I think you're going to like what I have to say, but you're probably not going to like me at the beginning, but I think I'm going to finish strong. <laughs> so, I think the challenge that your clients have is that the section of 40A that you're relying on is for the use. I think, I don't think that you get any argument from me or probably anyone on the board or probably even the, the, the town that what's actually there and built is protected as legal non-conforming. So whatever's there, as long as there's not like a, a life safety issue, can stay. It's just a question of how can you use it. The portion of the statute that you rely on, uh, and I think this is an important part, reads that if real property has been improved and used in accordance with the terms of the original building permit. So you have to be using it with something you already have license or permission from, from the city, which is the very issue that we have, except for, and this is the part you're gonna like, the affidavit that you have and what weight the board can accord that because I don't know how you got it. I probably don't even wanna know, but you've got a notarized letter from the uh, zoning enforcement officer at that time saying that he knew about what you were doing and actually issued permits to do that. So I think, and Kyle, I think this is maybe where we can, uh, you know, put a wall up to everyone else that might come forward and say, well, hey, I've got, you know, an illegal apartment and you let them do it. Now you've got this precedent and now anyone can do anything. And, you know, as long as it's been there for six years or 10 years, anything goes. Here, I, I think that there's an opportunity if the board wanted to, to see the affidavit that the petitioners have as actually a license and that they could fall within this exception and I can't imagine that too many other people are going to be able to get a notarized letter from the building department saying that yep there's just the paperwork snafu and uh, we actually did issue these and it was you know lawfully occupied with that use I mean if they can you know I guess we gotta get Stuart in here and, and have a chat with him if all these affidavits just keep popping up but I think that this is the first time that I've ever seen one come across and I mean, I, I, again, I mean, I can only take this guy at his word and he's signed a notarized letter. So we know it was him and we know what it says. So if the board wanted to find a way forward, I think that the affidavit provides that and also safeguards it from any potential future abuses by people that come before the board. Okay. I'll start off. By commenting that when we we'll go back to the very first session we had on this first hearing they had on this thing, I, my comment at that time is that in my entire tenure on this board, it's probably the worst piece of documentation that I've seen supporting a piece of property in this town. And uh, but and I was pleasantly surprised to see what we had before us here tonight. But I went through all of the documentation that was presented to me, and and a lot of that documentation defines the property as a family house but within that same documentation I found where it also made reference to three living units all right in the existing documentation now the, the, what does that justify I don't know it just probably confuses the process even more uh, but <coughs> council review which was reiterated by Andrew here said that there were three courses of action that uh, that seemed to be the way out of this thing one was the Testify that a permit that existed was lost, or find a building permit that authorized this, or get a variance. Variance would be darn hard to get. Uh, but I think this document, and I agree with what Eric has just said, I think this document provides the wherewithal, in my mind, to move forward affirmatively on the request that's before us this evening. Okay, it is a certified document. Uh, I don't know that I've ever met this person. You, uh, you two have been on this board a long time. I don't know if you even knew this gentleman either. But he did certify. And uh, that, to me, is sufficient. Okay. 
Okay. Not my being the other last member. Um, the comments that I have, um, I can say that I do recognize the signature of Stuart Leclerc. So I'm not denying that that, that could have uh, easily been done. I, I, along with Eric, I'm not going to ask you how it came about or what he remembers and you remember and so forth and so on. I will say, number one, that any decision that this board member board uh, gives this evening is not um, going to be indicative of other properties or other situations that come before this board. Um, that has always been, in my years, um, a, stat a statute that we have, uh, this board has always followed. I will tell you also, however, that there is a discrepancy between um, some of the documentation. Some of the documentation is based upon uh, assessment, an assessment done by the town assessors when they put it on the on the list. And the when they go in to assess a particular piece of property, they're assessing what they see. They give no credence to uh, zoning or other documentation that may or may not exist. And this has been a problem for a very, very long time. And not only, I believe, in Reading, I believe in many communities. But it's an issue that we have addressed many, many, many times. Um, the unfortunate part of it is that um, the applicant purchased the property in good faith and um, The term caveat emptor does come to mind, <coughs> which means that um, you bear the, the weight of doing um, your investigation and making sure that what you're being presented is the truth and the faithfulness of what went on before you. That puts us in a very uh, difficult position. It's not just us. It puts you, the applicant, in a position. Um, I don't know who Mr. Nigro was. I don't remember if I ever met the man uh, in selling the property to you. Um, but the situation comes before this board. And um, in reality, uh, before this, doc this document came before us uh, this evening, um, I would have thought that there was very little chance of moving forward on it. Um, however, uh, having this in front of us uh, gives us a, a, an option, uh, as Eric had mentioned, uh, to possibly get through this particular situation. I can't speak, should this come up again, uh, if it's ever going to... It's, it's, it's done. The decision of this board is done on the merits of what is presented to it. This is a very particular uh, important document in, in that, more so than any documents I've seen. And this is, uh, I'll say, as I would have mentioned, that um, I haven't seen a situation like this before uh, in my uh, status on the board, uh, my membership on the board. So I believe there is this option um, to us for this particular case. Um, and, and it's difficult. I mean, the safety of it, uh, I'll address uh, Kyle's concern. Is this going to present a problem down the road? Um, I don't know. I'm not an attorney. I don't know when you go to sell the property, um, other than you uh, registering this decision uh, with, with the courts, um, that there wouldn't be problems down the road. Um, if this board so inclined to, to do uh, Chapter 7 of the uh, um, I guess that's the best that I could, best way that I could address it. So, depending upon um, what 
uh, uh, David has to say, attorney, a counselor, um, you have any other comments that you would like to make? I don't, other than to say I, I appreciate and acknowledge the comments that each member has made. Um, I think it's a what makes it a very unique circumstance is the fact that um, we were able to locate Mr. LeClaire, thank goodness, and that he was able to clarify what was otherwise ambiguous in the record. And I think if you then apply that to the very clear case law, they talk about the fact that once a building permit is issued, in, in re response to what Mr. Hagstrom had mentioned, um, there is a, a Supreme Judicial Court case that interprets 40A Section 7 that says the word original building permit means the building permit issued before the use that's now considered a violation. So I think that's what we're talking about. It isn't the original. Obviously, the building was built probably in excess of 100 years ago. But this one that was issued, these that were issued in 1986, we do have the benefit now of knowing that the building inspector who issued them said he was aware and was authorizing a third unit. And I think that's the, the critical distinction here that, from my perspective at least, would make it extraordinary to meet that precedent, even to the extent that it was, it was were precedent at all. Okay. Any other comments from board members? Uh, there will be five of us um, voting on this particular case. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I did square in some people who uh, did not, uh, were not either e e able to or made comments previous, so I'll open up to the public comment uh, before we move on. Uh, is there anybody who wishes to uh, make a statement or? Yes, if you would give your name and yes. your address. Pamela Adrian, 87 Ash Street. I'm the butter. I have known folk, these folks for a good long while and support their quest for uh, obtaining the variance or any proper approval by this board for the property. I know that they have done a splendid job in updating the property recently, coming into compliance with all requests that we put in front of them, and they've done a beautiful job. Any other? Anybody else who wishes to speak? Here we now close the public section of the hearing. Um, I need a, uh, I'll accept the motion. Um, one way or the other, but the, the five members voting will be Eric, Asai, myself, uh, Bob. Because I do have, even though Eric was not here, uh, according to the Mullen rule, which as long as he goes back and sees the initial case um, and gets signed off from that, uh, he's eligible to, to vote. Um, and being a full member of the board, uh, he'll be voting this evening. Um, so I accept, it, accept the decision, mm -hmm. accept the motion for a decision. I'll go, I'll go ahead and do it, Joe. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion, uh, and in this particular case, I believe what we're going to be doing is overturning the building inspector's uh, decision uh, to cease and desist the use of a uh, third residential unit at 28 Green Street uh, in light of uh, the notarized statement from the building inspector at that time, 1986, that... Uh, he issued and approved building permits for uh, renovations and adding a third habitable unit at 28 Green Street. And this all goes back to the state statute that uh, allows a unit, even if it uh, doesn't meet zoning, that if it's been in use for six years or more, uh, that use then becomes a uh, grandfather use for that particular uh, situation. So, on your section, you may have to because I think you, John, you may have to refresh me on that. Can you the original notes there? Uh, we may have to ask for a withdrawal or request a withdrawal from the original application because they were requesting a variant or a special permit. We will have to do that after. Yeah. After okay. the vote is taken. Yeah. Yes. 
So anyway, that's the motion to okay. overturn the building inspector's decision see. there based on the state statute. Okay, do we have a second to that? Second. Um, Eric, second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the vote? Uh, five zero zero. Um, the second piece of it is uh, you have the original application was filed asking for a variance or other relief. Um, that's still open. So um, I would accept a request by the applicant um, to withdraw without prejudice that, that particular request for a relief. Yes, and we would so make that application. Thank you. Uh, do I hear a the acceptance of that? I will make a motion to accept that uh, request for withdrawal. Do I have a second? Mm -hmm. Second. Any discussion? No discussion. <coughs> All in favor? Five zero zero again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, you will have to, um, I don't know, the, the only question unanswered here is has the building inspector inspected the premise to make sure that the safety and welfare uh, of the applicant and this particular whomever may be yeah. uh, occupying the unit uh, go in and and do the uh, inspection and clarify that that's the only thing that's his job from this point forward we understand he, he did come out and inspected yes. in fact we some work was done to uh, we support the decks. We recited, rebuilt the decks and put a new roof on. He came out, walked through the whole thing, and he was a structural engineer come out. You would, you would now, I believe, you would probably want something in writing from the building inspector. Uh, not about what you did before on the deck, but you would want something with his approval of acceptance of that as a livable, inhabitable unit. All right. Thank you. Get it in writing and put it in the file. Thank you.
The second case is uh, uh, 87 Franklin Street. The Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's meeting room of Town Hall, 16 Wall Street, Reading, Mass., on Wednesday, December the 5th at 7 p.m. on the application of Josh Latham on behalf of Eileen Gorman and John <coughs> Bugin. Bugden. Bugden. Uh, pursuant to Mass General Laws 40A, Section 9, for special permit under Reading Zoning Bylaws 5.3.2, in 5.4.7 to raise the existing attached garage and construct a two-story accessory apartment attached to the existing single-family dwelling at the property located at 87 Franklin Street in Reading, Mass. Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters. Let's accept to say that the abutters were notified, as were the following. The Board of Selectmen, Town Clerk, Police Department, Fire Department, Building Department, Conservation Commission, Health Department, Assessors, Assessor's Office, Engineering Division, CPDC, mm -hmm. members and associate <coughs> members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, North Reading, Wakefield, North Reading, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath, so if you think you may wish to speak this evening, please stand and raise your right hand. Anybody else? No. It doesn't hurt and you're not required to speak. Can you swear that the testimony given be before the board this evening uh, will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? The answer is I do. I do. I do. You didn't have to stand. That's <laughs> 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 the answer. Is <laughs> okay. Uh, Josh, the floor is yours. Good evening. Attorney Josh Latham here tonight on behalf of Eileen Gorham and John Bugden. Eileen is with us this evening. John has uh, hurt his back and is not here. Um, with us also are Peter Sandorsi, Matt Langus, and Jim DeBurrow of Phoenix Architects. Um, they've also got their design plans up here. I know we've submitted smaller versions, but just for the purposes of our presentation, we have these as well. So to give you a very brief summary, the applicants propose um, to seek a special permit pursuant to 5.4.7 and 5.3.2 to construct an accessory apartment within their existing single-family home with an increase in the gross floor area. That's the section of the bylaw that requires we get a special permit in a successor apartment. The construction itself complies with all dimensional setbacks otherwise. So to give you a brief um, understanding of the existing conditions, this property is located in the S20 district. Uh, it is not conforming solely with regards to lot area. The lot area is 18,617 square feet. Glenn has determined in his denial letter uh, that he could still issue the permit uh, pursuant to 7.3.1 the only issue is the accessory apartment use. Um, there is also a small shed located uh, on the easterly portion of the lot, which will be removed as part of this project. So to give you a, a bird's eye view um, of what the design entails, I will turn it over to the architectural team, but roughly speaking, the proposal is to demolish the existing garage, to roughly build in that same location, a two-story addition, which is where the accessory apartment will be located, and also to construct a second story above the existing single story. The gross floor area of the existing uh, principal dwelling is 1,997 square feet. The gross floor area of the proposed principal dwelling is 4,157 square feet. This is achieved by the existing first floor, adding 122 square feet to the first floor, and then a 2,038 square foot second story, all part of the principal dwelling. The proposed accessory apartment, again, is roughly in the location of the existing garage, and that gross floor area would be 990 square feet. This includes 495 square feet on each floor. The main entry will be located, located to the easterly side of the property, so there will not be a front entrance to the accessory apartment. With that, I'll turn it over to our architectural team to uh, go over the design concept. Good evening, everyone. Matt Landis from Phoenix Architects. Uh, the reason why we wanted to show everything, the proposed addition and the accessory apartment at the same time, especially from this point of view, 
was to show you that we're, we're trying to keep the addition uh, of the second floor and the accessory apartment cohesive with each other. And that has to do with a number of items. It has to do with the siding, the, the nature of the gables. Uh, the trim that we're using is, is the same trim, how we're carrying uh, any metal elements through the project, the, the use of, of brackets and similar style windows. So we wanted to show this as a street view to, to basically show you the difference uh, or the, the cohesion between the two different components and how they relate to each other. So on the first floor plan, uh, Josh broke down the, the square footage already, but I'd just like to review it as well. Uh, the addition on the first floor plan is a 79 square foot addition uh, storage to get down to the existing basement, along with a, a two foot by about five foot addition to the connector that I'll call is about 43 square feet. And that acts as the primary access to the second floor. A lot of the reason for that is we're trying to keep the existing floor as existing as possible to keep costs down and when the goal is to essentially chop the roof off, keep the existing ceiling there and build right over it the brand new floor and maintain as much of this existing footprint as possible. In the accessory apartment, uh, Josh mentioned that the, the entrance is actually on the easterly side so that would be on the right corner here. Enters into uh, a living room in the main living quarters on the first floor. Also includes a staircase to the second floor, which are the bedroom spaces, um, a kitchen towards the back, and a small half lab and an area for a washer dryer. So the square footage of the first floor is 19 or 1,997 of the existing principal dwelling. We are adding um, a total of uh, 79 for this, the storage area on the back here and 43 in the corner to make it a total of 2,119 square feet. The entire second floor addition is 2,038 square feet, bringing it to a total of 4,157. One third actually gets us to closer to 1,400 square feet, but because we are, we're max, or, or the maximum allowed is 1,000, we are actually at 495, uh, I'm sorry, 495 square feet per floor, bringing us to 990 square feet, so 10 square feet under the allowable uh, for the square footage of the accessory apartment. The second floor uh, is mainly comprised of a, an open family room and a few bedrooms on the primary dwelling. And on the, the accessory dwelling side is a master bedroom, closet, half lab, and a bathroom with an office. So in addition to the front elevation and, and tying in some to do a front to back gable for the accessory dwelling and match with double hungs, metal accents, um, fight point brackets to make this project look like it, it started and ended at the same time. These are the proposed left and right elevations as well showing the, the gable of this second floor addition and the shed roof addition off the back to uh, accommodate additional square footage above the existing sunroom on the first floor. And then the last three new pages are to show you the existing first floor plan of the principal dwelling and then the existing elevations of the principal dwelling as well. If I might submit to the board, I did a very brief memo, mostly so you can simply track the performance standards that were required to meet with the specific numbers that are identified. If I may approach the board. Thank you. Yeah, that's what it was. And the performance standards on the second page. We do it by lettered item right from the zoning bylaw, uh, 5.4.73. Uh, to hit each one, the first is the requirement that it be a separate housekeeping unit. Um, switching over to the proposed first floor. Um, you'll see if you look at both the proposed first floor and second floor plans, we have completely independent units, uh, both inclusive of their own bath and kitchen areas. There is no interior access points between the dwelling units, which is one of Glenn's requirements. Under subpart B, the requirement as to the gross floor area, as you know, are required uh, not to exceed the lesser of 1,000 square feet or one-third of the principal dwelling. Um, we fall well short of that. 
uh, if we were going to meet a third of the principal dwelling, it would be 1,385 square feet. Thus, we are limited to 1,000 square feet. We are proposing 990 square feet. Under subpart C, uh, the owners do propose to live in the property. This is actually for their family's use as an in-law. Uh, under D, the aesthetic, ensuring we maintain a single family appearance to the property. I think Matt did a good job of, of explaining why we've done what we've done with this design proposal to, to maintain that single family aesthetic consistent with the neighborhood. Um, subpart E is regarding internal stairways. It does not apply uh, to this type of a project. Subpart F requires that if there are two existing front entries, if we need to modify them for the accessory apartment, we have to maintain one as a principal, one as a secondary. We are not actually having to modify them for the accessory apartment because the entry for the accessory apartment will be on the side. Uh, subpart G, all parking will be within the common driveway in its current location. Subpart H, both units will be tied to municipal sewer and water. Subpart I, the accessory apartment is designed with only one bedroom and the owners will not allow occupancy of more than three individuals. Subparts J and K do not apply. Uh, so in conclusion, you'll see my final paragraph, but essentially what we're saying today is we believe the proposed accessory apartment meets all the performance standards required by 5.4.7.3. It maintains the single family character of the neighborhood. It's consistent with the intent and objectives of the zoning bylaws, and therefore it's, it's compatible and we believe it's uh, entitled to a special permit and we hope you agree with us tonight. We'll answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Um, I'll first uh, I'll run the board again ask, see if there are questions for the applicant or, or, or um, council. Uh, sir, this time, Derek. I have no questions. Okay. Right. Just one. You say it won't be occupied by more than three people. How many will occupy it initially when it's first done? I believe it will be one person, one uh, person, but three is the limitation within the bylaw. That's, correct. That's yeah. the only reason we, we identify that. <clears throat> okay, I have no other questions. Uh, <clears throat> okay, uh, it appears most everything has uh, been uh, met here. Uh, the question I had is in regards to when we run into this all the time parking. Uh, obviously, you're eliminating an existing garage there now. Uh, is the existing driveway? going to be maintained uh, for use as parking. It'll be outside parking now, no no garage to parking. That's correct, it'll be entirely exterior parking. And how many vehicles will it be, do you know? I believe it'll be three, but if I can add it up. So this is a site plan that was prepared by Jack Sullivan, uh, I believe you do have it. Okay. Yeah, we, so we do have the site plan. Within mm -hmm. that space of the, the 22 by 11 feet um, is enough room for two cars to be side by side and tandem with each other. There's also an additional, I think, 5 to 10 feet to the right, so you could you could almost pull in and park an additional car to the to the right there. But there are enough space to, to park two tandem cars front to back, left to right, in that existing space. Right, so that's what's expected now is just two vehicles that's right. Be using that. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, I want my. I want my. Did you go by the place? Yes. Yeah. It looked yeah. like you could put three cars in that existing yeah. driveway. Yeah. Yeah. Four in there. Well, yeah. almost put four. Yeah. Four. Well, in looking at it, if you stack them yeah. in side by side, yeah, yeah, you could fit four, but it, it would be tight. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't. Yeah. <laughs> Proof is That's so you're not changing the asphalt at all? Sorry to jump well, on there, but uh, the topic. 55 feet long, 22, f you know, the width is about two spaces wide. Yeah. And 55 feet, uh, yeah, if you had a compact, maybe a Cooper Mini, uh, <laughs> you could fit six of them in there. <laughs> I, I think it's, yeah. That's fine. Thank you. That, that's all I have, really. I think, other than that, they've met the criteria of uh, the section for a special permit. Okay. Uh, my only comment would be, when I look at the performance standards, and uh, particularly D, about maintaining the appearance of a single-family home, um, and while you do have the, the new the entry to this, the uh, in-law apartment on the side, which meets the performance standards, could you speak more, and maybe this is for the architects, um, the second door that was originally by the garage, 
How does that function? Because it doesn't seem like it really flows with the rest of the house. Like, where does that lead into in the first and second floor? So it, it leads into a staircase that goes to the second floor. But this is typically done in, in a single family like this. If you know, if this were a connector in a garage, that would be the mudroom. So you would walk in, and this it would function as a mudroom for the primary the house. This is the main entrance to the house. And the secondary entrance acts as a mudroom, both as a, a connector to the second floor as well by that uh, the second staircase that's added as well as the, the basement access as well. So you can get in through the rest of the first floor or through the sunroom on the first floor, is that correct? Say that part again, I'm sorry. To get access to the first floor, you have to go through the sunroom? That's right. Okay. And then on the second floor, does it have access to the rest of the house as well, or just... Through the main staircase that, that is in that connector, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Given all the questions that were asked already, I do not have any on our zoning board side. As an architect, I will talk to you afterwards if you like, but the floor plan is very inefficient. I would caution about the amount of circulation path that you have on your interior floor plan, which ought to be more fully addressed before a final plan is resolved. Great inefficiencies, but I'll leave that to you and your client. I have no further comments. Okay. Um, as for myself, uh, I do have some questions. Uh, I think the the major question that I have is the uh, I'm not going to talk about the movement throughout the house and whatever and the architectural aspect of it. Although I find it a little odd um, that you have to make the complete circle to get up to the second floor. Uh, in the primary section of the house. Uh, as, as far as the two means of egress on the uh, accessory apartment, not, not a problem. Uh, I do have a problem with um, the aesthetics aspect of it, which is part, portion D, and the door, the second door that's there. Uh, the, the bylaw was specific um, about it maintaining the appearance of a single family residence. That door appears to, or if you were driving by, you would say that uh, there is two uh, living units within that house. That was not the intent of the accessory department way back in 1982. 82? I think they didn't. Um, so that's that's the, the major problem that I have in meeting those and. Um, that, that bothers me a little bit because I don't think it's con consistent with what the intention and purpose of the bylaw was. It's new construction, and I understand this new construction aspect of the accessory apartment. Um, I see we have, uh, for, exa for example, um, We have two dens. Um, I'm thinking. Um, I'm thinking that uh, to look at Kyle's uh, concern, which is mine also, um, a doorway between at both sides of the or uh, access um, would be a lot easier uh, toward the, what you call the mudroom. Um, to get up to the stairs, uh, kind of low, uh, but my in, my thought was that that doorway, that second entrance, does not have to be there to be consistent with the sections of the well, the six, seven sections that that we talked about. That's my concern. If I could uh, reply to that one comment, I think section subpart F actually would control the fact of the two doors simply because subpart F says where two or more entrances already exist on the front facade. Um, as modifications are made to such entrances, it shall result in one appearing to be principal and the other appearing to be secondary. So we do already have two, these, these entrances already exist on the existing single family home. So what we're proposing is simply this current secondary entrance is right next to where the garage is currently. So we are simply maintaining these entrances. And, and I believe the design does appear that there is a primary and a secondary. 
And I think the purpose of the secondary to maintain is really the driveway is here. The folks will go into the home. And that's where the mud room is, and that's where you'd have get most likely. So I think that's so part F really goes to that question. Well, in, in my mind, Josh, the appearance of the of the property, number Sir. one. Number two, it's the it's the whole idea of which we have changed the bylaw. We haven't, but uh, through the um, bylaw changes uh, effective uh, a year ago, um, we've added new construction. The new construction aspect of it changes that. We don't know where that's going. Um, and I, again, I, I, I hate to set precedent or anything else, but trying to <coughs> adhere to the existence of the of the uh, sections of the bylaw, naming each one of these sections. That's the way. That's the way I feel. But that that's just me. Thank you. Rick, would you have? Yeah, actually, I, I tend to agree. Uh, you, I lived on what I was trying to hit on that door, and I think if you asked any person looking at that house, where does that door go to? It looks like it goes to another dwelling. And until I looked at the plans, which I was a little um, not not shocked, but surprised. Um, that it actually went to the primary residence. And I think that might deviate a little bit, which is my opinion, from the intent of subpart C. Anybody else on the board? Thank you. Seeing nobody. Well, uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. In addition to the entrance issue, I understand that there's a proposed elevator lift for a wheelchair? Yes, that's right. How does the individual who would be in a wheelchair get into the building as there's no ramp proposed for the entrances? So the, the actual, um, this is only about, about a six, six inch difference to the threshold. It's about a four inch slab right now and, and maybe a few more inches. So when we tear that portion down from basically the existing, the existing um, dwelling all the way over, we plan on getting that as close to the ground as possible. So either no lip or a small lip with um, with a, a short ramp there to get up to just about four or five inches to get into the that connector space. Is that going to impact the parking availability that's needed for the site? No, I don't believe so. Was that was that then uh, for the primary section of the house? The the individual who would be occupying the primary section would be in wheelchair. That's right. Not the person occupying the accessory. That's correct. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I, I know that's a concern, that, that second door in front. I, uh, but to, to be honest with you, I don't have an issue with it because it's already there. I mean, and you take a, a look time. at the existing front end elevation, you'll see the second door right beside the garage. And they're going to be closing off those two doors there that are the garage doors. That'll be the apartment. And granted, they will be adding a second floor but to the whole structure. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I don't, to be honest with you, don't have an issue with that door that's beside the garage. It's there. I would tend to agree it uh, could be viewed as a mudroom door. Uh, you know, previous house that I owned had two doors in the front, a, a main entrance and a secondary entrance right beside the garage, which was the mudroom door. Uh, so it's, I think it's common. Uh, I know, John, you do get concerned with, uh, you know, meeting building code and stuff, and, and that's what I was looking. Now, there's only one door to the accessory apartment. There's two, there's two doors. There's one two in the front and one in the back. Okay, this is where I get confused. Where's uh, oh, actually, okay. it's on the right I see. Side. It's on the right side. I see. I didn't see the one on the second front side. You might say the side. It's on the front, and then the back has two. Okay, that's good. Thank you. So, yeah, I I, I don't have an issue with the the way it's uh, shown. I, I also normally would not have an issue with this, except, and again, it's not a huge issue for me, but it's a substantial rehab. The opportunity exists to make it look like more like a single family home. And also you're increasing the size of the primary residence to accommodate the size of the accessory dwelling that you're trying to get out of this. So I'm wondering, have you thought about that? This is for the question for the architects. Doing something else with that door, maybe changing the angle so it comes into the side at all, 
or make it look more like a single family residence in any way? Is that possible? So some of what was driving this originally is we tried getting a, a three foot uh, wide staircase to go up to the second floor in, within the existing mudroom and it's, it's shy by about eight inches. So the, the staircase that would be able to go up in, in this current configuration to the second floor inside the existing mudroom uh, was too short to be able to continue the existing path of travel now which is to go down through the sunroom and then into the kitchen. So by adding this additional four or five feet we can accommodate both access to that staircase and uh, access to that pneumatic elevator that would that would go up and down. Um, you know, we, we tried to make the accessory apartment uh, that access not be on the front, so that was a primary reason of shifting that door. Uh, we had a similar thought of, of that door is existing on the front, so we're trying to maintain the look of the, or some of the look of the, the primary residence. I understand that. Just looking at the existing condition, it, it stands out more than the current door that exists right now to me. Probably because of the roof element that's now added on. Weather protection. Yeah. <coughs> that's all. Anybody else? I agree with Bob. I don't. Those those two doorways have been there. I don't know. How old is that house? About 1951. Those two doors have been there since that time. So, you know, I'm not as excited or upset or concerned about that as, as some of those have expressed. But did I hear you say a person in a wheelchair is going to occupy that accessory apartment? No. It, it, it's planned for, so no one is, is in a wheelchair currently. I think it's planned for if there was a time where accessibility was an issue that we would have planned for a space to provide an elevator to get from the second floor to the first floor. And the stairwell. The, it's, it's actually uh, an yeah, elevator. Right the inside of on the plan. Yeah. To the left of the staircase and the right. connector. Right. Sounds like you're the board. So right above that uh, in the second floor, um, that would occupy the same space. Um, for the elevator, so it, in essence, if you're coming in from the outside, I think this would be a two-door elevator. Uh, one as you come in the door, and one as you exit into the second floor or the primary. So the only way for the person to get to the rest of the house uh, would be to uh, go around, circle around, uh, through the mudroom, through the sunroom, back into the kitchen and the den and the living room, and the master bedroom and so forth. So <clears throat> a lot of the reason for maintaining that access is that's what is there currently. And to remove that wall um, is, is is additional cost that we've talked about between us and the client of, of whether or not we should be done. So for the time being, we are looking to maintain the, the existing access into the house. But if, if accessibility was an issue, um, then we would revisit it at that time and provide a, a better access into the house. That entrance is at a lower level than the main house, correct? This entrance here. Is that a lower level than the main floor of the house? There are a couple steps down, correct. In the sunroom? That's yes. why you can't make a direct connection into the den. That's right. Hmm. All the circulation issues. If there, one perspective is to understand that this is a corner lot. And that the third entrance to the, now the second entrance or the front main entrance to the uh, ancillary addition is visible from the street. I don't know what and how that's looked at because there's actually two sides to this entrance. I do see that the side entrance is very understated. I presume that it would stay that way. I might advise that it doesn't stay in the corner. Corners are very inefficient for circulation. Um, but that if it were uh, moved or whatever you're doing with that, it's not embellished to make it look and become more of an independent entryway. And as right now, it looks like a side entrance to a garage. So move canopy or other elements there. I imagine there would be at least a light fixture next to that door. Exterior light fixture. 
So if I hear you right, Kyle, what you're saying is you take the doorway that exists right now, move it to the left towards the corner? Uh, the door's on the side of the building. I would advise moving it away from the corner of the building and move it to the center of that facade so it's directly across from how you're leaving that living room, entering the hallway, which brings you upstairs or into the kitchen area. But that door is from the driveway a little bit further in terms of your circulation pathways. There's a number of things to be worked out. Some I understand are difficult, but I, but I bring that more of the point of entrance that it's not further embellished so that it looks like it's a whole separate dwelling unit with a side entrance. Anyone else at this time? We'll open up to the public hearing, uh, public section of the hearing. Anybody wishes to make a comment or? Uh, May, please indicate uh, your name and your address if you so wish to make comments. Yeah, I will. Uh, Greg Ryan, 594 Pearl Street, so I'm about three houses away. I think the architects and the homeowners have done a great job. I would highly recommend approval of it. Anyone else? No one else. Then I'll close the public uh, section of the hearing. Um, I'll return it to the board. Um, I do have a concern with that doorway. Um, I know if, you, if you're telling me that there was somebody that was going to occupy it, the entrance, uh, that, it, that it was it for the entrance, uh, because of access, that would be one thing. Um, but the, I think Nick brought it up when he said that this is a major um, remodeling, I guess, of the of the structure. <coughs> and, and as I said before, that new construction gives another dimension to accessory apartments. I think since the bylaw passed, uh, we've had six, maybe seven already. Um, so I know that this is going to become an issue down the road. Uh, the new construction of it gives it a new dimension. Whether it's attached or detached, doesn't make any difference. It's a new dimension. So um, I think the accessory apartment uh, needs to adhere to pretty much the standards that we have here. So I have a problem with that doorway right now. Uh, unless somebody can Persuade me from <coughs> the problem being that it appears to be a second entrance Correct. in its design. Even though it is a second entrance to the primary, it doesn't appear that way. And we want to keep the, the whole accessory apartment con construction uh, in the bylaw was that it does not appear that it's. As other people on staff has said, uh, this is in essence a two family. Uh, so we don't want it to appear that we have all two families in the town. And that's what we're getting away from, when you, especially when you do a major construction. And that's what the whole bylaw was constructed for. And that's the, the second dimension or the additional dimension that we're putting on accessory apartments. I don't have the problem with the accessory apartments. I think it's a great idea, especially when the need today is to take our family members as they grow, as we grow older, <laughs> and they come back or whatever, there's a place for them. We can do that. But the question is, how do we keep it with the appearance of a single family structure? <clears throat> if I may. <clears throat> Absolutely. I, I think it really does go back to subpart F, because it does envision this exact scenario. The idea that there are two pre-existing front entrances. If this what they could build this entire project and not put an accessory apartment in it, it would look exactly the same. There's nothing that regulates the question of two front entrances, but beyond that, we already have two front entrances. So the add-on of, of 
requesting permission to include an accessory apartment, subpart F is exactly on point. And it says if you have to, you just have to make one look primary, one look secondary. And I think if that's the standard, one clearly looks primary and one does look secondary. Beyond that, it's, it's truly an aesthetic. But you could build this as a single family house and meet all zoning requirements. So the question of whether it meets you know, single family design versus making sure it doesn't look like a two family, I do understand that it does become personal to some extent, a subjective analysis. And this board is, is, is with that unenviable position of having to make that determination on a regular basis. But because we have two pre-existing front entrances, I think, I think it goes beyond that issue right now. And, and that's what I'd hope, how I'd hope you would see it. Well, if I may, I'm trying to dissuade you. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I, I think that overall, the success I see in this building is that there is a kind of uniformity between the addition or the uh, annex building <clears throat> and the main building itself. That they work in harmony together as a single aesthetic. I think that's a positive for the neighborhood as a whole. Uh, I think that even such features as the roof that's used on the bay window of the addition, that that same material is used at that entrance point, does tie those two elements together, which gives a little bit more of a feel that like that belongs, whether it's interpreted as a uh, mudroom, as I think most people would interpret this if they were just driving by. Uh, but I think to alleviate some of the disparity between the two entrances to the primary might be that you further embellish the main entrance itself and maybe downplay. <clears throat> I wouldn't remove completely, but I would simplify some of the detailing. Maybe that pitched roof is slightly lower so it's not as vertical and, and upright. Maybe the brackets are simpler or you're adding more brackets to the main entrance. and. Uh, maybe even considering that to be a, a hip roof where it's going up. Let me ask you this. What is the finished material expected to be on this front entrance piece here? The exact same. Same material? Yes. Uh, because you could take that at a diagonal so that you see the same material so that even from this side you're reading right. to some degree that material is a very low slope so I don't know you just put that roof at a 45 or an angle. I know it's not a square in plan. Mm -hmm. Uh, but certainly you're adding brackets which uh, elevates that. You might look for ways to embellish this with some similar architectural features okay. as you've incorporated elsewhere in the building. I, mean, I think that overall there are some nice details within this design that are very thoughtful than the, some of the typical uh, housing that you might see. That helps unify it. They've integrated the existing stonework. I'm glad that that was kept because that adds to the character and quality of the design itself. I think there might be some difficulty in finding matching stone for the extension of the chimney. Is it the intent to reface or to, re to keep, or are you able to match that stone? Ideally, we would match it. Um, so that I mean, that's the main goal to match. It. I would suggest that you're also repointing at least the entire mm -hmm. entirety of the chimney, not the front facade of the house, but at least the mortar joints once redone will help to make that chimney look seamless. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, that play of that entry roof, uh, maybe even, is that all glass on the door itself, that Probably entrance yeah. hallway, that you might look at embellish or, or downplaying the amount of glass that's in that entryway. It's certainly, in terms of the functionality of that room, that much glazing is not needed. It's, it's a very large hallway. Um, so those would be some of the things. I mean, I think that overall the design is, is comprehensive that it feels like it's all one unit. I don't necessarily see it as all of a sudden so distinct as in a separate addition that there's articulation that matches it to the main house. That if I'm driving by, I would feel that this is a single family dwelling. And that with some further proper articulation, I think the main entrance could be made to look more of an appropriate size and scale and feature to draw its attention, to downplay a little bit further the secondary door to the main dwelling. And then plus, because there's the entrance on the side, that that is maintained as underplayed as it is, because this is a corner lot, that as you drive around, 
You don't want that to all of a sudden appear like there's a whole entrance. It would be that door that I would be more, wanting to be more conscious of how that appears and as I drive around, all of a sudden I recognize, oh, this is someone's main entrance. There's actually two families living in this unit and that, that is more in violation of what we're trying to uh, maintain within the community. So the other thing I, I kind of get back at, when you build an accessory unit, it's not supposed to be more than a third of the primary. But when you look at that and you see this, the, it almost looks like a ta two townhouses to me. You see the right side, and even though that entrance is benefiting the primary residence, it looks like it's part of the accessory dwelling. And I think that also deviates from the intent. And going back to this being such a substantial rehab, that makes me feel more uncomfortable. If you were keeping the original square footage of the primary residence and adding the addition, that would be a different situation. But if you look at the current, the current uh, configuration of this house, and even though that front, that door does exist, it doesn't look like a second unit. It looks like it's right next to a garage. The garage is gone. You have a large amount of more living space. And even though it's really on the line for me, it does, doesn't appear like it's meeting part D. And even part F, I'm not comfortable with exactly because it is such a substantial rehab. Um, and it doesn't look like the secondary entrance to a primary residence. It looks, to, it looks like another entrance to a secondary apartment. Um, and while I do agree with that it is a pretty cohesive overall uh, facade, it's still making me a little bit uncomfortable. There's one minor thing, or it's a significant thing in some respects, and I don't know that it might help in the reading, the interpretation, but I'll put it forward as something for consideration to that end, is that the entirety of that uh, second unit, plan-wise, could be dropped back towards the rear by almost four feet and still staying within the boundaries of the property, thereby by pushing it back, potentially separating it as an addition, not a separate family unit, but it would begin to make that entrance piece, that secondary door, by this facade here dropping back, it would pull this piece forward in essence and making it more part of this building, whereas that would drop back. I haven't provided what it does to your second floor plan. That's what I'm looking at now. Yeah. <clears throat> it doesn't affect well, the rear. You, know, I, I, you know, we can talk about the architecture. We are not an architectural review board here. We are a zoning board of appeals. They meet all the zoning requirements as far as I'm concerned. They've met the criteria for an accessory apartment. We are not here to dictate to people or to suggest to people how they should proceed with the architecture of their house. That is up to the individual homeowner. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And the aspect of bringing that point up is only in regard to how the front entrance or the second entrance is being defined and or made to appear more appropriately to match the goals and, and intentions of the town of Reading zone. Well, I understand what you're getting at, yeah. but I believe the, they have met the criteria of the section of the zoning bylaw for an accessory apartment. What's the threshold, John? Three or four votes if there's a five board meeting? Mm. I, th I think uh, even special permits we need is the four out of the five. It's a majority. It's a majority. Well, not super. Four. So we would need four positive votes. Just curious. I, I mean, I'm. 
the two criteria that I have are the same two criteria that Nick has that that uh, we have a problem with. Uh, D, uh, and then again, uh, F. I know that the the actual structure um, has two entrances right now, and um, you can certainly build this without uh, a second uh, a, a second living unit in it, and it would stay and look the same, exactly the same. But it doesn't meet to me the intent and purpose of the bylaw. Uh, there is uh, I don't know what the wall is between the um, the accessory and the primary. Uh, is that uh, concrete? Is that uh, just Wood. I wood. mean, you're, you're you're keeping the you're keeping the footprint or the foundation of the garage as it stands right now. Mm -hmm. So I assume that the wall going up is is. Uh, so it's wood. The garage is actually getting wider, and the mudroom is also getting wider. So the garage foundation would be ripped out. Okay. Then it's in the door. Then again, then it becomes a. You're not modifying the main in the the main structure as it exists today at the first floor level. Yes, you are. Are you? Yes. So you're redoing the whole thing. Not the whole thing, just in the sections that are, are highlighted on on the uh, I believe it's the second page. So it's really to get this staircase to work because the current configuration. If if we tried to fit that staircase and still maintain the access that's that's current now through the sunroom, the staircase wouldn't be to code. Um, so that's this is the addition here, this 43 uh, square feet, um, and then the, the 79 square feet actually in the, in the back as well for the storage area. So those are the two portions on the first floor that are getting extended. Well, your garage is 22 feet wide. The accessory apartment is 22 feet wide, minus the addition of the move bump out for the um, wall, for the staircase, and whatever, as you said, to meet code. Um, so, in essence, you are modifying the existence, but you are taking it down. Correct. Uh, existing garage, including the foundation and reforming the foundation? Correct, and that has to do with the, uh, the uh, modification of the existing mudroom and shifting that over. Well, so much of this is involved uh, with the building inspector, too, because no matter what we say here, we're only doing the zoning aspect of it. We're not doing the building aspect of it. So whatever meets his requirement is, is what is going to be done. I'm just still having a problem with the, uh, that second doorway. You are modifying it already. Uh, that that wall. So you're you're t you're taking the existing doorway out and you're replacing it. Are you not? Only to to provide access for that elevator. Yes. But you are taking it out and replacing it. It's in a new position from where the existing was. Correct. Mm. So it's not it's not existing as it stands now, in the new right. in the new structure. So again, this is a, a major modification. That's why I keep, I keep. Oh. Well, I think the, uh, I think the whole <coughs> proposal is a major modification of the existing house. Oh, certainly, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, that's neither here nor there. It's a major, major modification. But <coughs> to me, they've met the criteria of a. I, I don't see. They're relocating the door. Okay, so the door's there. There's a door there now. If somebody drove by that tomorrow and that door was shifted two feet one way or the other, you, th nobody would ever notice it. A shift like that. The door's there. It's still there. Okay. And to, to me, you get two doors out in the front now. There's going to be two doors in the front in the on the proposed. There's no change. You're not changing the front of the house. Uh, what you're changing is the garage, and you're adding a second floor to the whole structure. That's what you're changing. I must go on record as having to totally agree with you, Bob. 
approval. Subpart F does it, it does envision that there there may be modifications made to an existing door, and it says that modifications made shall result in one appearing to be principal and one appearing to be secondary. Do you think that second door is supposed to benefit the accessory or still benefit the primary? Because my interpretation is that second door is supposed to be made to look like a secondary door but be used for the accessory apartment. And you're still keeping both primary doors for the primary residence. So I always understood that the board had always wanted because of the other section saying that you have to maintain the door on the side. So th there's obviously internal inconsistencies, and that's where the board comes in and has to interpret those. But subpart D, which you've also referenced as a concern, says that any modifications to the principal single-family dwelling shall be designed to maintain the appearance of a single-family dwelling. Well, the single-family dwelling has these two doors. So we're not changing the appearance by adding a door. We're maintaining the two doors. The next sentence says, any new entry to an accessory apartment shall be located on the side or in the rear of the principal dwelling. We've done that. We, may, we, we had several meetings where we had to say, we have to figure out where we can put this door because we can't use the existing secondary front door. I sat here on one of the first or second hearings you had where you had to labor over whether the existing secondary door on a house on Lowell Street had to be relocated. And that's the input that I gave my client. We cannot use a second front entry door because the board was not comfortable with that maintaining a single family aesthetic. So that's that's purely the justification for how we set this up. I'm, I'm still looking at mostly on D. You have the opportunity to, to make the modifications with such a substantial rehab. And the performance standard that I'm trying to get comfortable with is the appearance. And, I, I do feel uncomfortable trying to look at the facade of this and, and figure out what is acceptable single family appearance. But it's not sitting comfortably with me because that door that we're all talking about is more pronounced than the original current door right now. And the garage is gone and there's a large living structure there and it looks like that door doesn't even go to the primary res residence anymore. And the floor plan is so unique that when you open that door, you wouldn't think you're going into the primary residence. And from the street, and I'm trying to, you know, conform that with the performance standard D, I'm having a hard time reconciling that it's maintaining the appearance of a single family. And I, I guess it goes to the, the heart of the whole issue is, is the fact of a second door the problem or is it the appearance of how our second door looks? Because if it's a purely aesthetic question, that's one thing. If it's the nature of having a second door, subpart, back to it, subpart F is directly on point. I have no problem with the second door. It's, it's for me, it's the aesthetics door. of it. And I think as the board is being asked to make a call on, does it look like a single pr family? That's all. How far does that uh, roof that's projecting over the door in question extend out? Three feet. I would just move to have that removed. It's an over embellishment. Oh. It's making it complicated. I don't think we can tell you what how, how to do it, but um, it appears that you um, Without taking the vote, it appears that you're in a conundrum. Um, do you, is this something that you want to talk about, consider? Can I request, um, Mr. Chair, if, if I can meet with my client briefly in the hallway um, for a five minute break? Absolutely. Thank you very much. We have quite a few minutes to go over, too, this evening, don't we? We do. Three. Three yeah. sets, I think. And we have a case coming up 
Uh, next Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. That's the continuance of 40B. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of stuff going out on that. Mm -hmm. You have packets for us tonight Thank on you. that? Andrew, okay. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, that's at Pleasant Street, just so you guys know. Next week, okay. Pleasant Street. Next week is? At Pleasant Street. And at Pleasant Street. Time I actually came here. <laughs> like it maybe again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's getting confusing yeah. back and forth. So, well, we also have a very busy um, January as it stands oh, now. Yes, we do. Was that true? Um, you guys will decide dates at the next hearing, but Boy. it may be needed. We need oh, all the 40B. January dates. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So all, Wednesday, yeah. all four Wednesdays. Five Wednesdays, I believe. Five Wednesdays. <laughs> That's a five Wednesday month. <laughs> <laughs> That's special. Yeah. Well, I think we might have a conflict on the Wednesday, the first Wednesday of the month. Okay. Gotcha. We just want to make sure that we're going to have sufficient time to gather all the material, uh, discuss an open meeting. Right. With Psy going away the beginning of February, January is very critical for this application. Yeah, I live at the uh, 695 Pearl Street. Because we need time for the decision and then the write-up, which technically is 40 days. But we're looking at 40 days. So we're going to look at uh, a number of different things. But having the package, uh, which you're prepared to give out tonight, mm -hmm. to the rest of the board members, uh, that's only the board members has that right now. So. Uh, sending it out to anybody else. Franklin Street on Pearl Street and on the bottom. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those houses are for sale too, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Does. Yeah. Okay, it's hard to work. So you own the comments or? Options are not let's say on this. Was it the ability to They would make a caveat for the actually their process by which they notice how we have to do changes to the acceptance of There's a number of different options we want to see what if we may. <laughs> um, I'll show up with this I would ask going on. Matt to speak to it, but what I did was, as mentioned, to remove the overhang over the secondary door. Um, if that would give the board comfort of having more of an appearance of a secondary door and not looking like it's entering into a, a second unit. Yeah. So, uh, before I get into a little bit about what Josh was talking about, uh, a lot of what we have done to this house is is what we actually do to projects that that come to us that want to add a garage and a mudroom so we approach that safe to a single family house and we try to approach it the same way because a lot of times would and I think it's maybe 20 or 30 percent of the projects that we're currently working on is someone that needs more space needs a mudroom and needs a garage so the way that we would do that is to add a connector a garage and a master suite above that would mean that the second entrance, the second door to that connector. So that has become so common, and, and the moves that we try to do to mimic that are pulling this forward. It pulls it forward 12 inches, but it gives that gable uh, more of a significance on that side. And the, the recess of that, that mudroom going back 12 inches is to do the same thing, to have a break in the roof and to have a more prominent where this would typically be a garage. So that's where we approach this as a single family residence in the aesthetics. Uh, what Josh had touched on uh, a, a few minutes ago was to present to the board to simplify this door, to actually use the existing door that's there now, um, eliminate this roof, and then also simplify the door that is on the right side. If that was enough to uh, appease the board, we would, we would be able to make that change really quickly. How do you by simplify the door on the right side? So less glass, uh, more of um, a what would be a utility door to a garage, which would just be a six-panel solid core door 
uh, that would have uh, no really visible access through that door to the, which would be the side street. And by keeping the existing, you mean in the same place? Keeping it, remove the existing door and put it back. In a new location. In a new location. Without the overhang. And without the overhang as well. Right. To, to take, uh, again, to, to, to minimize the, the impact that that, that eight foot or you know, seven and a half foot connector has. Nick. So that would actually make me more comfortable um, because it does it, it, it takes the mass down a little bit. A little bit and like you suggested, putting a more utilitarian door doesn't make it look like uh, what it looks like now. Um, you know, it's really the, the, it's to me the two doors are fighting for which is the primary. They both look like primary entrances, and I think that would alleviate a lot of my concern. Actually, what yeah. would would move me. Uh, is the aspect of utilizing uh, that, which I, I wasn't, but maybe I didn't pick it up in, in reading the whole thing, but uh, uh, having that entrance for uh, the possibility of a, uh, not a handicap entrance, but an access doorway uh, for the primer, because the steps certainly do not provide uh, access for somebody who is somewhat uh, handicapped or hand uh, disabled. Um, that in itself um, could do it, however, um, if Nick feels comfortable uh, in moving in that direction, um, <coughs> um, I believe um, I'm going to have to um, being the negative in this, only to send a message in in the future uh, to other uh, parties coming in. You'll get what you want, but the message has to be sent somehow. We got to clear this up. The board cannot ignore things that are in the bylaw. If we if we want to fix the bylaw, the accessory came in like a a bolt of lightning. Uh, the people weren't weren't expecting and since that time everybody everybody we we have a stack that we can't get through right now of people coming in uh, on regular hearings all at the end of the year ne never happens um, and all of a sudden this this becomes the one of the primary issues I think we need to be aware of that if we need to go to to town meeting to uh, to address some of these issues I mean, that's why we have a st the staff planner here at all of our meetings. He needs to address that, bring it back to uh, community development uh, section of, of, of staff, mm -hmm. uh, address it, and, and get it fixed. Um, so I guess that's where I stand right now. So I would accept the motion. Uh, Nick, you want to do this one? Do they have to modify the documentation in the packet? Well, the doorway, you'd have to modify the, the, uh, we can, we can modify simply by indicate, use this plan as a reference, which we have to do, and then just circle it on the, that and send it out and make sure that it's in the decision. That, that will be removed and to minimize the, uh, the doorway. We would ask if the board be willing to vote with a condition that that, that be adjusted. And the same thing on the on the side door uh, to move that, and then it would be up to the building inspector to follow through on that. Yeah. I move to grant the petitioners Aline Gorham and John Bugden um, a special permit under Section Five Three Two and Five Four Seven Two on the lot at 87 Franklin Street in Reading, Mass. Um, as shown in the certified plot plan. 
uh, prepared by John D. Sullivan, PE, dated 9-10-18. Um, special permit to an accessory dwelling. Um, and the condition being that the awning is removed from the second e uh, entrance. And what was the other condition we're going to do? Well, we have to re probably refer to the, uh, the architectural plan yep. uh, by uh, Peter Sanborn. Okay. Uh, we don't have a date on that. Yeah, there's a second. Oh, there is. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this up top? Prepared by Phoenix Architects. Phoenix and Architects. Certified. Certified. Okay. So dated 10 4 18. Mm -hmm. And then the change the change is conditionally change. modified yeah. by the following layer up on yeah. condition of chain or whatever. The condition that it be modified that the awning be removed um, and that the side door to the accessory dwelling be uh, simplified. And how are you going to simplify that? It would be converted into a, a traditional six panel um, solid door that was typically installed in a garage, more utilitarian. So converted to utili utilitarian six panel door, in addition to the uh, front door that will also be converted to a six panel utilitarian door. And we're removing the... Um, the awning? Well, the, the roof area over the secondary door? Yeah. 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 Anything else we want to add? Uh, the three conditions, standard conditions. Yeah, okay. And the special permit is subject to the following conditions. The petitioner shall, shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan of the proposed construction and proposed foundation plans prior to the issuance of a foundation permit for the work. Two, the petitioner's final construction plans. The new structure shall be submitted to the building inspector along with the as built foundation plans prior to the issuance of a building permit, and three, as built plans showing the completed construction shall be submitted to the building inspector immediately after the work is completed and prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. Do have a second to that motion? Second. The members voting will be the same members voted on the previous case as all five of us are full members. Um, so, um, any, any discussion? No discussion? We're ready for the vote. All in favor, please raise your right hand. All opposed? Let the thing, <coughs> let the vote show 4 dash 4, 4, 1, 0. Vote. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Uh, Josh, uh, give me a few minutes. Uh, Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Which one do you want to do? Yeah. Uh, the two.
Here you go, Josh. here in the brackets. Yeah, I don't think it really has a, uh, a name. Birdshell? Birdbass. Birds. Can we get a chance to uh, look at uh, October third? Are there any corrections? No, not on ten oh three. I read through it. I had no comments. I had some. Do you? Yep. Uh, first page, bottom. Very last sentence, starting with Mr. Jurema discussed documentation need to. I say it should be needed. First page? Yeah, it should be needed. Yeah. English. Uh, just throw this one out on the table. On the second page, after the vote was 500, we say the board discussed the future of the board regarding this legislature. Do we need that sentence? It's up to you. <laughs> you guys had a conversation. Well, so. well regarding this legislature. But what legislature we were talking about? We don't yeah, describe it. Yeah. 
So it's kind of yeah, that section seven. It's kind of the one you read. You say, "What are you talking about?" But I just pointed it out. Well, it's part of the bylaws, so I think it's already... MGL forty A section seven. Exactly. We don't have that new copy, that new forty A, which I asked. Um, see if we can procure. Um, we looked into it. It is very complicated to print and <laughs> <laughs> not getting that. <laughs> but so we're going to fly by the seat of our pants, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, in this case, why don't we just take that out then? Sounds good to me. Um, I do have uh, up in the top of that same page. Yeah. Um, we had only four people voting that night. The second paragraph. Four out of four votes, yeah. I think there were five people, but only four I were able to make a vote. Kyle was a member during the opening of that hearing, if I remember correctly. I don't, I don't have, could you check on that? Because it, if that's the case, the vote couldn't have been 500, zero, zero, it would have to be 400. Zero, zero. Right. right. I think that's what it was. Wouldn't I have been on the board? Was this the first time I know there was one, there was one Why? meeting. Yeah. And I don't think you did you know that? Right, because I think Kyle couldn't. We were absent in one meeting, right? Was that an so he said he would also mm -hmm. support it, but he couldn't because he wasn't here. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes, I was there for that. Too. You were there for that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. okay. <clears throat> no, I saw that, too, and it, it was a little disturbing, but then the more I read it, it... Okay, let's see. The right thing I would meet for it, I'm sure. It if you make it, it if, uh, and, uh, may if it's four out of four... And we had five people eligible to vote. Just take out the out of four. And put the in the, infer in the affirmative. Actually, it would be that if they were, and it, it appears there were five, there were five meet people at the meeting. Basically, what you were saying, you would need four five. out of the five. Four out of five. Okay. Four out of four. Okay. Uh, maybe that's... Right. Maybe that's maybe that's what it is. Right. That's what I, I can't remember back, so... I think so. Okay. Um, anything on Willow Street? <coughs> what? Where are we? Oh, you. Nope. No. This would be on page three. Oh. No, go over to page four. Page four. Nothing on no. Page four. Yeah, one of my last name is misspelled. And the A instead of an O in Tarnow. <laughs> you know, Sorry autocorrect that. does that. That's terrible of it. <laughs> Do you want to change your name? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, on the next one, it's Turno. Turno. It's almost a bad name. <laughs> Heads up. Don't worry Come about it, Craig. It's not just you. Wait till the next uh, minute. So you'll see me all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> um, had, I'm, go ahead, John. I had uh, one, two, three, four. Fifth paragraph down, Mr. Drury discussed how a summary of 40A, A should be capitalized. Talking about page four? Yep. <laughs> and the end of that sentence, it doesn't read exactly right. I'm not sure what I circled that for. Not a use and pertaining to. Maybe it's just the word if. Right. Do you want to make it? Well, 
to the board make a finding that the building inspector was correct in his assessment. Right. Yeah, I think there's just some lack of yeah. commas in there. Okay. <coughs> make my sense. Want to go down three paragraphs from yeah. that? Yep. Mm -hmm. Says Mr. Dorima, big long paragraph. Yep. Second line says the board discussed the need for documentation with the application. Applicant. Probably the applicant. The applicant. Okay. And then further, a couple of more sentences down. The board discussed the new legislature, legislature and their interpretations. Is that legislature? I mean, less legislations? Hard legislation? We sure didn't discuss the new legislation. Mm -hmm. See it there? Yeah. yeah. I just thought that was the singular. Yeah, legislation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where's that one? Uh, same paragraph. Uh, yeah. Legislation. Legislation. Yeah. Legislation. <coughs> Anything else? Mm -hmm. On page four. Oops. Go ahead. On page four, does Mr. Toronto suggest that getting an as built? As built is a hyphenated word. And it would be <coughs> suggested getting as built documentation of the floor plans. Would you see that, Kyle? That's the last paragraph. Mm -hmm. Last uh, paragraph. Okay. Mr. Yep. Toronto suggested getting an as built, which is hyphenated. Of the building yep. plans would be the correct sentence structure. Mm -hmm. As built of the building plans. The second sentence is not a full correct sentence. The board discussed how that even though the use is being discussed. A more accurate depiction of the structure may be needed down the road. I think how? that's going to be rewritten. The board discussed. The board discussed how that even though the use is being discussed, a more accurate depiction of the structure may be needed down the road. Maybe a comma. Yeah. The board, yeah. Discussed, the board how? discussed comma. No, the board discussed how comma. That even. The board discussed. The board discussed how that even though the use is being discussed, a more accurate depiction of the structure may be needed down the road. And suggested asking code enforcement buildings what would be required for three family. I think when I remove the comma after road and end, suggested asking code enforcement building inspector what would be required. So it should be split into two sentences. The board discussed how, comma, that even though the use is being discussed, a more accurate depiction of the structure may be needed down the road. Period. It was suggested asking code enforcement building inspector what would be required for three family. Brian spoke of obtaining occupancy permits. I probably split that into two sentences. Mm -hmm. I'm putting in necessary comments. And one more. Okay. <laughs> Page six, just above other business. Mm -hmm. Do we have a Mr. Redmond on this panel? <laughs> just above. Where? Where? Yes. Oh, All right, yeah. Mr. Red Fern. All right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Glenn seconded it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good pick up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, anything else? There's nothing except the, except the motion to accept the as amended. As amended. So moved. Can I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Second. All right. Yeah. Next one was the uh, 24th of October. Mm -hmm. Okay, starting off with members present, uh, Kristen. I think throughout this whole thing, you you had my name spelt uh, wrong. You have an O and spelled an E. Uh, so I spelled two people's names <laughs> wrong. Mm -hmm. 
Kyle's not spelled right either. Yeah. Is there any yeah. in? Yeah, my last name is wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she tried. <laughs> we tried yes. you this time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sneak it oh, in there. Right. Yeah, okay. And uh, anybody had anything else? Let's see. <coughs> Uh, Just the motions and stuff. Second, I didn't have anything else on the first page. Second page, uh, I had the third paragraph down, stop Mr. Redfern. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, fix that. And then we'd like to review the loading and operation plan for the development. Instead, take out the word issue, it's development. Okay. Before being comfortable with no loading zone. You might even want to put that in quotes, no loading zone, period. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm scratching my words. That's okay. Put the word none out of there. Easy. And, that. and then a signage plan would also be helpful, yeah. And then Mr. Redfern threw out that paragraph yeah. and throughout the whole thing. Mm -hmm. and I think that's particularly what I saw on there on those minutes. Yeah. Somebody else might have other things. Anybody else have anything? Yeah, it's something uh, on page two, second to last paragraph, the third sentence. Um, Which page, Nick? On page two. Okay. Yeah, second to last paragraph, the third sentence, sentence down, I make a reference to a store water system. Store water. Um, store water. I don't remember what it was called, but it was basically where the... the tail water? It, yeah, because it couldn't be connected directly to the sewer line, so it had to go into this something where it was pumping, getting pumped out, mm -hmm. whatever that was. If, is, if, is store water the correct? Uh, retention it's, system. It, retention system might be... Oh, uh, yeah. Let's go with that. Okay. So where did you put in the retention on the replacement of storm water? Okay, storm water. Okay, storm water is misspelled too, but that's it. Really. Yes. <laughs> okay. Mystery. Um, Changes on that one? Go for the changes. Okay. As amended, do we hear? I make a motion that uh, we accept the minutes of uh, October 24th, 2018 as amended. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. Nick. Vote. All those in favor? Five zero zero. Mm -hmm. Is this one that was actually in attendance at? Cold Street Senior Center? That's where this was held? Mm -hmm. I don't think I was there at that one. At the 1024? Yeah, is that correct? Yeah, you were there. That's the Senior Center? I remember the library in here. Doesn't look like you said anything. Another one had one here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you were there. Mm -hmm. Did you come in late on that one, Kyle? Maybe that was the one. I'm sure. I think. Check. 
I, I just don't even know where the senior center is that I was at. Huh? We've met at the library okay. twice, yeah. right? Okay, so we In cross here. you out. All right. Indeed. Indeed. So we don't misspell his name. <laughs> right, that would address that. <laughs> okay. So that was five zero zero. The previous one was six zero zero. Oh. I don't even think he was on the phone. He couldn't vote on this one. Yeah, he's still on the phone. Kristen, the previous <laughs> one on uh, 10, 10 03? Yeah, I was not there that day. That's that was sure. six zero zero was the vote. Sorry? Six zero zero was the vote. On, on ten three. On all of them? Yeah. That was the day that I was, yeah, I got, I got, hung up like that. Yeah. Okay. That wouldn't make sense. I didn't have any, any comments on the way around there, yeah. I'm not going to be quiet. That's yeah, funny. it was five because Eric was here. It was five? Yeah, yeah, yeah Eric, Eric was in here. Eric was in there. Oh, that's right, okay. Okay. Now, we're on 11-7, uh, November 7th. Right. I'd like to bring attention to the fact that my name is spelled correctly. <laughs> <laughs> We're all set. Uh, at least the first one I saw on page two. The uh, uh, second motion, and a motion made by Mr. Redfern, seconded by Mr. Pernice. There's only Board of Appeals move to with grant the request to withdraw the special permit application. It was not a variance and special, just a, I think if you look at the application, you'll see it was just a special permit. Yes. Uh, that's so we're we'll taking out, um, withdrawing the variance? Yeah, it wasn't a withdrawal of the variance, it was a withdrawal of the special permit request. Right. I thought they talked about having I believe that's what it was. So we gave a we gave a variance on that one. Uh, no, we made a finding. No. Well, this was uh, yeah, 65 Longfellow Road. Right. We we uh, did do a finding on it. Yeah. Right. I wrote up the finding. Yeah. Okay. And the, so we did two. The things. original application right. was a special, special. permit request. Mm -hmm. And I know during the whole discussion, here, we discussed uh, the possibility the of a variance. Variance. But it was but never yeah. advertised. But it was never advertised. Okay. You're right. Yep. And let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Page three. I'm on page two still. Oh, oh you're still on page two. Okay. okay. What you uh, under you? case under Pearl Street. Yes, 1818. One, two, three. The fourth paragraph. Okay. It says, when I asked if the property entrance to the accessory apartment was strictly from the porch. Ms. Toomey, I would say, replied in the affirmative, described the property in main house Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Okay. That's all I on that page. Okay. Page three? Uh, page three. I just had uh, an insertion on the fourth paragraph down. Starts up Mr. Dreamer and Mr. Redfern. When you get to and taken up by the town me at the town meeting and with the select board. I think the word and has to be inserted there. Yep. And on case 1819, if we could in, put the Ash Street, not just Ash, just yeah, oh, get the Ash street, street in there. On that. Okay, that was it. <coughs> I forgot the spelling of my name. This time they snuck an A in there. <laughs> Is that still on page? At page four, right smack in the middle on the motion to vote. <laughs> Uh, got tar all over my name. name. <laughs> and then when you get down to on the mo on a motion made by Mr. Rimfer, seconded by Miss Spell Sai again. Mm -hmm. That's what you were there. Okay. Mm -hmm. He's trying every vowel in your name. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. 
I'm looking to see where the eye gets placed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <clears throat> Page five. Page five, yep. Way at the bottom. You have a new spelling for my name. Oh, look at that. Huh? And it's <laughs> <laughs> <Four two. laughs> Poor Kyle. He got all over the place. Oh, that's me. No, that's not me in this one. Oh, that, oh he's fine, yeah. No. Oh, it's Sai. Okay. Um, go up uh, two lines. Uh, my opinion that it appeared that Mr. Hurley, on behalf of the applicant, is going beyond what is required. Opine that it appeared Mr. Hurley, on behalf of the applicant, is going beyond what is required by the town. <laughs> and uh, on that same page, page five. Yep. Uh, motion by Mr. Pernice, and then the vote five zero zero. And then there's a double line space, it looks like, and then again a motion, and it's up. I think that was case number 18, 15, 28 Green Street, where I made a motion to continue that case. 18, we're talking two different cases. One's 1820, the other's 1815. I think, we I think you need to slip in there, case number 1815, yes. 28 heading. Green Street. A heading. Yeah, a heading. Yeah, for that. Mm -hmm. Heading in there for that. And I had under other business the full time building commissioner, not commission. Okay? That's what I have anyway. Who is the building commissioner? Right, right there, John. Oh. That's when we were talking other business yeah. and uh, yeah, Andrew mentioned we get a full time building commissioner. Commissioner now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Commission. Okay. Okay. Signing here. Take a motion on that. Yeah, I'll move to accept the minutes of uh, November November seventh, two thousand and eighteen meeting as submitted. Mm -hmm. Second. Not second. All in favor? Put the yeah. And then we have 1205? Mm -hmm. no. We do? No. We just, I don't know. Yeah, that's today. <laughs> 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 well, you see, just keep on going. Just keep on going. <laughs> 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 Let's bang out the whole next year. <laughs> okay, is there any other business before the board? Uh, uh, Gee, would you like to come in and join us? I'm just coming in to say hello. We're taking a break next door. Oh, what's up tonight? Uh, Hi, Hi. Uh, finding a, a select board going over the departmental budgets. Last Did you make night, any presentations? Last night I was out. So it was last night and tonight. <laughs> I think Andrew has some other business there. He's going to pass out. So uh, these are just the new uh, plans. plans. From Eden Lakeview. Uh, well, before we do that, do I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Yes. Second. Second. Oh, yeah. okay. Now it's in. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay. I didn't know if we need to adjourn or not.